In the past, block mortars were fitted with a simple light bulb, so that the light was only in the direction of travel. Modern locomotives usually have several LEDs to display complicated light schemes. In this video, we show you how to install an extended light scheme in an older locomotive. For the conversion, we use this RF442 from Hawk. At the moment, it is analog and can only display a headlight signal with three lights in the direction of travel, each fed by a light bulb. We want to change to show a Swiss light change with three lights in the front and one white on the back. In addition, the rear light should show red when the locomotive is traveling alone. The following materials are needed for this conversion. The previously mentioned locomotive, a hog magnet, an interface, in this case a Plux 22 from ASU, a decoder, here we have a ASU Lock Pilot 5. In addition, you need various colored wires, two choke, a small capacitor, four 600 ohm, four 680 ohm resistors, two 470 ohm resistors, six white SMD LEDs, two red SMD LEDs, and a quad connector. Then we need bonding UV glue or resin and black paint. As tool you will need a soldering iron, screwdriver, pliers and a decoder programmer. In this case we use an ESU lock programmer. Optionally you need an analog Merkling transformer and a DC power supply. The conversion consists of following steps. The motor is rebuilt, we will keep this short as we already have similar videos, see the link. Then we modify the light guys and solder the LEDs. Finally we mount the interface and program the decoder. The first thing to do is to check if the locomotive runs properly. To do this, run it on a test track. In this case, everything runs cleanly. Next, remove the housing. Then remove all the cable and the light bulbs. Then you remove the direction switch. Then remove the drive bogey. Then you rebuild the motor and clean everything. You can see how to do everything in a detail in one hour previous video. See the link in the description and in the upper corner. On hard locomotives from the 1980s or 90s, the traction tires arch badly, so we replace them right now with Merklin 7153. Stop. Now we put the drive buggy back and screw it tight. So, now we can turn our attention to the light. To solder SMD LEDs, we start mounting them on a circuit board, proceed as follows. Take masking tape and put it with a sticky side up. Then stretch it and fix it with two short beads of masking tape. Now take the LEDs you need and place them with the light side on the tape at the distance at that will be used later. It is important to remember where the anode and the cathode are. Each LED has a marking to show this. 
refer to the data sheet to find out which ones are used. Now cut out different thin copper wires. Short if it between the two LEDs and longer at the end and at the beginning. First you have to apply solder to the LED. Heat it briefly and put solder on the cathode and anode. With the wires used here you have to remove the isolating varnish. You do this by holding each end in the solder on the iron. Then heat the pad and solder the wire to the LED. You have to be careful that the LED does not suddenly stick on the soldering iron. That's why you should have extra LEDs. Usually you have to buy a minimum quantity anyway. Finally, solder a series resistor to the each anode. You have to calculate the values for the type you are used. The values here are for the diodes we are using. For our conversion we solder the following. 2 times 1 red LED with a 680 ohm resistor, 2 times a white LED with a 680 ohm resistor, 2 times 2 white LEDs in series with a 470 ohm resistor. We test with the power supply if everything works. The decoder supplies 16 volt for HO, so we adjust the power supply to this voltage. The next step is to prepare the light guides. First you remove them. To do this, remove the driver caps. Since we control each output separately, we have to cut away the end pieces. Then file them flat. We mount the LED with bonding. We put a drop and hold the LED in it. Then we use UV light to harden the mass. We test again. Then we smear bonding again to enclose the LED. Then we cure the wall sink. Now everything is isolated and should be protected against damage. On the right side we put the white LED and the red one. For this we first glue one and then the other, before you bake everything in. So that no light leaks, paint everything with black paint. Now mount the lighting guides back into the housing. Now you have to connect everything. To make things easier, we use the existing circuit board on the housing to distribute the 16 volt. Now we solder all the resistor on the long wire. Since the connections are on the back of the decoder boards, we have to solder everything first. The two LEDs in series go to the front and rear lights. The white LEDs to AUX 1 and 2 and the red LEDs to AUX 3 and 4. The odd connections are at the front and the evens one are at the back. The front is where the pickup shoe is and the rear is where the motor is. Wires are already attached on the connection or wires are already attached to all connection on the board. For AUX 3 and 4 we have to solder two wires on the adapter board. We use PLOX 22 because all connections are the same. With MTC 21 only AUX 1 and 2 are amplified. The other have to be taken directly from the decoder or the board is actually useless. Or you have to install the circuit board with amplifier logic. The board is mounted in the housing, so you have to put in a plug to the motor and feeder in case you want to remove the housing. On the plug we mount the motor connection in the middle and the track connection on the outside. If you pull the plug the wrong way around, the locomotive will just run in the wrong direction, but nothing will be destroyed. So now we have to program the decoder. We put it in the test stand. First we program the light shim. We define the following function. F0 switches on the light. F1 switches the high beam. F2 switches the red light in the rear. We leave F3 and F4 as standard with shunting gear and direct control. F5 switches off the front light for double traction. 
and F6 does the same at the rear. The outputs must now be configured. The LED mode and the limit are activated on the front light and rear lights. You can also declare it as fade in and fade out if you want soft transition. Do the same for AUX1 and AUX2 first definition. For AUX1 and 2 second definition set the light intensity to 16. This is used for the rear white light, which of course has no high beam function. Do the same for AUX3 and 4, setting the value to make it look good. So now we have to program the function lines. If F0 forward not F1 and not F5, then the front light AUX1 first function and the dimmer are active. If F0 forward F1 and not F5, then the front light and AUX1 first function are active. If 0 forward not F2 and not F6, then AUX2 second function is active. If F0 forward F2 and not F6, then AUX4 is active. If 0 reverse not F1 and not F6, then the rear light, AUX2 first function and the dimmer are active. If F0 reverse F1 and not F6, then the rear light and AUX2 first function are active. If F0 reverse not F2 and not F5, then AUX1 second function is active. If F0 reverse F2 and not F5, then AUX3 is active. Now load the configuration and test it on the test stand. Load the motor parameters from the presets. Now mount the decoder on the adapter board. Very important, the decoder goes on the board where it says decoder size, otherwise it will be destroyed. Place the locomotive on the track and climb the drive buggy so it can turn without the locomotive moving. So now you can test all the functions in the locomotive. If everything works satisfactorily, insulate all the solder joints and fix all wires in the housing. Then carefully mount it on the chassis. That's it! As you can see, it's not difficult to equip a locomotive with a complex lighting scheme. If you have it done by an external company, it can quickly cost more than a new locomotive. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below or visit our Discord server. And if you like this video, give it a like and if you haven't done, subscribe to this channel.